This video is sponsored by Art of War and Deep Cut Studios. Check out the description below for a wide range of excellent hobby resources such as battle mats, pre-painted terrain and premium token sets. Hi guys, welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm joined by... And it's Ian. What, are we, channel for what are we playing on this really hot summer's day? It's, it's really absolutely hot. scorching. It's so sweaty in here. What are we playing? Uh, we are playing Moonstone today. Yeah, that glorious little fantasy whimsical game. This is my first post-campaign game, so I'm interested. You're bringing the Norse, who are a kind of new sub-keyword. They are, within, yeah. like gnomes slash giants. Uh, I'm taking my usual fawns for the moment, so we'll show you our crews and we'll cut back in a sec. So these are our troops for today's game. As always, I am bringing my beautiful fawns. They're ready to rumble. So they had a decent enough showing in our campaign. Um, we'll see how they do today. So we've got Hoff. He is equipped with my one upgrade. He's got an enchanted blade, or in his case, an, an enchanted axe, so he can ignore passives. We've got Metal Gear Jada, who's the MVP of every game that she's in. We've got recently errated Mr. Toodles, who can now play some Goblin Funk Jazz. We've got the Mind Controlling Wendigo. We've got the Super Hippity Hoppity Jackalope. And we've got Gloom, who's there to just, just teleport and move people around in shadows. You've got cool new stuff. We've got the Norse gnomes as our base here, and my airship, which I've been sitting on for months, never actually got built or painted, and kind of rushed it out over the last week. You've done a down. beautiful job of both. Yeah, thank you. So in the team, we've got Young Jack heading us up. Um, he's Young Jack. He does Young Jack things. We've got Joanna. Um, hopefully... You know, she can usually pass off. She can reduce damage for any gnomes within four inches, but we'll just have to hope that Hoff's enchanted axe does not come into play on that. <laughs> We've got young Olim on the side there with his best boy. We've then got Loki at the back to help shenanigans with Joanna. And we've got Brunhilde, the giantess. Terrifying. Um, in because she can provide bodyguard for both. Well, all three, actually, all them Young Jack and Joanna. They're all beautiful paint jobs, but I'm just going to draw yep. attention to the tartan on Brunhilde at the back. It can take, like, the brewers away from Ian for Gilball painting, but it's like, I'll find a way to tartan them. Yep, she's, she's sitting there with her, with her tartan dress. Who's got your upgrade? My upgrade is sitting on Loki. He has the Fever Few Leaf. So he can give a healing um, to people. Yeah, can't gives he? an extra heal, so that means that Loki and all them can heal. Uh... Jack can give himself extra energy. Joanna can give herself extra energy. There's basically a lot of shenanigans in the team. Very nice. And uh, yeah, the airship just floats around, can't pick up moonstones, but can gun you down from distance. Let's get the board set up and get started. And here we are set up for today's game. It's quite the face off here. The moonstones are very evenly balanced, aren't they? I think so. A little bit more on your side, but that's a depth three one, so a bit tougher to pick Yeah, up. whereas we've got some kind of lighter ones for you. So uh, Ian has got the initiative. I got the early bird. It's not really much to the deployment here. I think it's quite a face-off, quite an even spread. The airship is terrifying me, just hiding behind the building that's going to come over and start dropping bombs. Uh, but I think tactically for me, just stay away from Brunhilde and her giant cleaver. Any thoughts for you? Um, I mean, I've never used the airship, so I have no idea what it's going to do other than <laughs> float around and probably misfire. I mean, it's on the other side of the board to Jada, so that's already a correct choice, I feel like, so it doesn't pop. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I know how the Norse gnomes work. I don't know how the airship works. <laughs> so we'll have some fun. So they're saying I've played a campaign card. We've seen this during our actual campaign. I've played the hunt, because why would you not take it with the fawn? So this is for the remainder of the game. I could choose a friendly fawn or animal during the replenish step, and it gains plus one energy. So as you can see, the jackalope has received it for me. So we'll go to the first activation of the first turn, which will be the Norse. Okay, so we'll start off with Loki. He will just take a four-inch jog next to this moonstone here. That's him. He is then going to spend two for one with the wind. And that is move friendly model within eight inches up to X plus, or move a model, sorry, within eight inches up to X plus one. Are you looking for blues? Uh, I'm looking for blues, and I am going to say that is a blue one. I will trust your blue one, Ian. I will trust that you're going to show the camera and you're being an honest man here. I will show the camera. It was, of course, a blue of one. Of course. Honestly. I can't possibly be I'll find out in editing. Yep. If you've lied to me, you'll get a, a sternly worded email. I can't believe you've done this. So, Joanna gets to move X plus one, which is two inches, so she'll just move... Shimmy around the the other side of her energy stack here. Yeah? Just put her there. So that was two of Loki's energy. And with his last one, he's just going to pick up the moonstone. 
and gain a slow token. And that's that. For my first activation, I'm gonna go with Gloom. He is gonna spend two of his energy to whisper to the jackalope and be like, oi, get your furry butt going. So he's gonna whisper to this wild thing and move it three inches forward. And then unfortunately he's perpetually slow. So I'm just gonna double check that I am within two here. Yeah, I'm gonna take a very slow jog. And not only am I slow, I'm also a weakling. So I'm gonna have to spend two energy to pick up this moonstone and pocket it as he just kind of like, I don't know, tries to dig it up with a staff rather than a spade. Okay, next up for the Norse, it'll be Brunhilde. She's well within her four inch jog of this stone here. So she's just gonna step beyond it. She is going to spend one to reduce that stone's depth to one. I've just noticed she's also got two swords on her back. Like she has like all a, the swords. She's a living arsenal. Yep. <laughs> Another hip. Yep. That's terrifying. And then she is just going to hold on to that one for a reaction step if needed. We're back to the jackalope then. Uh, we're going to try and pocket this as quickly as we can. So he's going to take a jog action to here. He's going to spend one to step to get into base with this moonstone. I spend one energy to dig it up because I have burrowing claws. The first time I make a harvest action, I can reduce the depth by two. And then I'm gonna spend two to hop the hell away from an airship that's gonna come this way. So I can place myself fully within four. So we're just gonna go just behind this for a bit of cover. And that will render us then slow moving forward. Okay, next up is going to be Olim. Olim is going to do a little bit of just running around, to be honest. So he is going to jog for four. Step one to get base with that Moonstone. And cast him one. He is then going to pick it up for one. And he'll gain a slow token. This is definitely the hoovering phase at this stage, isn't it? It is. Part. And then with his last one, he is going to use Fortunate. So that allows me to look at the top three cards from the deck, the Arcane deck. And I get to put them back in any order. So there we go. And that's what we've got. And we will put that back like so. Let's put one at the bottom and then the other two. So you can put one at the bottom of the deck and then... I can put any at the bottom that Ooh, I want. Ooh, that is any at the top, so... That is really good. That is all I'm done. He was just set off camera that like he's terrified of the Wendigo, but I'm going to have to kind of blow the activation a little bit earlier, so I can't mind wipe somebody with its, like, you know, soothing hips. So it's going to jog to here. It's going to have to spend one to step, because I'm just shy of getting to this Moonstone. So that'll cost me one. I've then got three left, so I'm going to have to spend all three to dig up this depth three moonstone, which will give me a slow and concerningly leave the Wendigo kind of in no man's land. Um, just, just don't worry about the airship, you'll be fine. Okay, we are going to follow the Wendigo with Joanna. She is just going to jog four past Loki to here. She'll then spend her three, just to do three steps, Go in the house. Go jackalope hunting. <laughs> Not gonna go in the house. No. Prepare a jackalope stew. Yep. It's time for the Hoff. He's gonna step up. He's gonna toot his little hunting horn. We've got two tooters actually, because I've got toodles as well. But this is gonna be the the slightly more gruff. Do do do. And he's gonna blow a hunting horn. It's gonna cost me uh, no, nothing gruff about. Do 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 do. do. Uh, it's gonna cost me one. I have an arcane stat of four. I'm looking for a pink. I'm gonna target the Wendigo and I move him X plus one. Ian, that, because I'm honest Tom, is a pink one. Ignore the hesitation, I'm just dumb. I'm gonna ignore the hesitation because obviously I looked at the deck in yeah, the previous yeah. activation. Yeah, it has to be a pink one, doesn't it? Yep, I'm gonna let you have that. Hey, uh, I mean, you know this, yes it is. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna move two. So the Wendigo is just going to shunt slightly further away, just to here. Hoff then has a jog action. Uh, he's going to go and stand literally next to the Wendigo here, and I'm going to keep these two just to kind of step around him in later activations, because stupidly put him in the way of where I wanted him. Okay, next up for the Norse, it'll be young Jack. Young Jack is just going to jog the other side of his son, Olim. So jog to there. He's then going to spend two 
and step towards this stone. It occurs to me that I'm seeing Tom Greenway in a week and I'm basically trying to kill his family on the battle report here. So if we just keep this quiet and I don't upload it for a bit. Then... Sorry, Tom. What Tom doesn't see, Tom will never know. <laughs> it's spoilers then... first, then put the murder up later. <laughs> I'm going to look at the top five cards on the deck. So I'm just going to show those to camera here. And I get to put them back in any order I want. So any at the top and any at the bottom. I'm just going to pop them back as so. And that is Jack. It's Tom's favorite part of the battle report. It's Jada's activation. So Jada's going to go. I'm going to trust Toodles with this. Time will tell how much of a mistake that's going to be. But he's been errated, so he might not be as... God awful as he's been previously. He's still no chubs. So he's still no chubs. I'm going to jog to behind this bench. We just had a chat about cover. We think that I get cover, but I don't. you don't, because I'm basically stuck yep. next to this, if that makes sense. So uh, as a you're reaction react, to that. Because you know exactly what's coming. I'm just going to step Brunhilde in to here so that she is within four. And that's her reaction step. I'm then going to shoot my bow at young Jack. So this is arcane stat of four, your evade zero, and I'm looking for greens. This is X plus one piercing damage. So that's going to cost me three energy. I mean, it's Jada, so we have to go big. I'm going to say that is a green three. Green three. Going big. I'm going to call your bluff on that. You're going to call me a liar? I'm afraid that is four piercing damage. That is four. Are you going to pass it off? Jack, to Jack reduces that by one. Nice. Thanks to his ancestral shield. Nice. Uh, but I'm then just going to pass that off to Brunhilde. Okay. Now, I'm not entirely sure if she gets the minus one reduction on it. I mean, we'll play it as is, yeah. and then we'll check afterwards. So, in theory, she'll only take three. Uh, once per turn using her bodyguard ability. Ian. That's a green two. That's a green two. I'm going to call your bluff on that one as well. Three piercing damage, please. I'll reduce that by one, so he only takes two. Ian, that is the end of my activation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, uh, I'm just going to step back so she's not precariously balanced here, because she can traverse water and forests easily, because she's sure-footed. And yeah, Jada doing Jada things. Jada does Jada. Okay, so we've had a little talk off camera and we think that because Brunhilde suffers the damage from Jada's ballistic missile that she doesn't get the damage reduction from Jack. So we've made Brunhilde suffer four damage as a result of Jada. Yeah, because Jack's is when he suffers the damage and basically yep. Brunhilde is specifically suffering for him. Yep. So we're going to retaliate <laughs> uh, with Shoot the airship. Button. The airship benefits from not suffering cover on its attacks because it's big floating blimp. So the airship is going to jog over behind Loki and is then going to Blast play the my campaign card. So let's just hold that here so people can see and get that in focus. There's ducks in a barrel. Play during the activation step before or after any action. For the remainder of the game, once per turn, I can draw plus two arcane cards when I'm targeting an enemy. I know well. I've got PTSD of Dave's uh, pistols firing off like mad. So you've got six cards because I'm a very yep. plus one and you ignore cover. So you're ignoring Loki being in front of you and me hiding behind a shack. Yep. So the airship is going to spend one and it is going to target the jackalope. Yep. I am looking for greens. At this point, I haven't had any benefit of looking at the deck. <laughs> so, and without Graddock, I don't get to ignore catastrophes since we're playing Norse. <laughs> uh, I am going to say that is a green three. Figure go home. How much damage would this be? X plus one pier so X plus two piercing five damage. Five piercing damage because I'm fluffy. Go on, yep. you can have your five. Okay. Uh, so. I'll show that. One, two, three, four, five. Immediately halves my health down to five. We'll show the rest of the deck and you can see that Tom was probably good to not call bluff. I mean, yeah, I literally have all the blues in the land, but nothing else. Anything else from your uh, ship? Uh, he's going to spend two to reload the gun. Uh, get ready for next turn. Lovely. So it's worth me saying Hoff has taken two step actions, one from the shot and one from the reload, just so he can kind of get his way around the Wendigo. Now, Mr. Toodles, I'm really sorry I talk smack about you because I actually need you to kind of pull your finger out and help the bunny now. <laughs> so he's going to go. He's going to take a jog action, which gets him just to within six inches, and this is important. 
Uh, I'm going to try and heal the Jackalope first for two. So this is an eight inch range. Uh, it is X plus one healing and I am looking for blues. And if we're going to go for threes, Ian, I'm going to say that this is a blue three, which would be four points of healing. I mean, that honest. Spear in his hide. Honest Tom. Honest Tom. Honest Tom. Would I lie to you? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to call your bluff on it just for funsies. Hey, yo. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say that this is a blue two. Oh, on you go. There we go. So I'm going to fully heal up. Uh, no one else needs any healing. That does mean that I don't need to be within six for a lullaby. So I'm just going to take one to make a little step action just to there. And that'll take us to the end of the first turn. So here we are at the end of the first turn. We've completed the customary grabbing of moonstones. There's two left on the board, but everyone is still mostly healthy, mostly good to go. Um, and yeah, you've got the initiative. So you've got plus two to this dice roll. Yep. So I have rolled a six. And a two. two. Okay, so that'll be the fawns who will take the lead. Uh, it's worth me saying I have got my additional energy and I am just going to give it for this turn to the Wendigo. And we'll get ready to go with the first activation of turn two. Well, because I got uh, lucky with that roll, I'm going to just get the Jackalope out of trouble to start with. So mine's going to be very easy. He's going to spend two to hop, so he ignores intervening models. This is why Ian was trying to be clever to whittle down my energy so that I was kind of like struggling to do this. But I'm going to hop to here. Uh, I'm going to take a slow jog to this position and then I'm just going to bank my other energy because what I actually need to do is unpack this little scrum before I can then kind of reposition the jackalope because I would like to gore something at some point. So he's going to sit there and that's his activation all done. Okay, so we're going to go with Loki. Loki is currently slow because he's lugging a moonstone. So he is going to slow jog two inches to here. He is then going to spend one to step. Stepping to here. I mean, lugging that giant bloody hammer should be perpetual slowness. <laughs> he is then going to spend two for a verdant growth. And we are going to go green fishing. Yeah, fawns usually love forests, but Joanna loves them more, doesn't she? So. Yep. Um, so I am going to play this one. I'm going to say that is a green one. I have two green ones in my handy, and so I'm going to call you a liar in the hope that you're, you're not being honest with me. Uh, you think I'm not being honest? What is it? Hey! Now, the, the, the good news for you is I don't have any catastrophes. The bad news is I grew up drew every green in the sun. So yep. no forest for you, sir. No forest, and he's just left hanging out there. And this is the risk of not checking the deck beforehand. <laughs> right, we're going to carry on with what brought us to the party. So Jade is going to make the smallest of jogs just to get within range here. And I'm going to spend three to shoot a bow at young Jack and try and see if I can continue to teach him that... Carts are not safe from arrows. <laughs> so I need a green. I'm going to say that this is a green two. This would be X plus one piercing damage. X plus one piercing. Yes. Uh, I'm going to let you have that. Yay. Good man. Good man. And definitely a good choice. So that is going to be two up to three back down to two because of your shield piercing damage. Yeah, he's just going to pass that three off to Brunhilde. Nice. Knocks her down to what? How she Knocks her that? down to six. Uh, and then Jada isn't going to step at the moment. She's going to bank that just in case she wants to step back onto her puddle of justice. Okay. Then, as we're just being peppered by arrows from the <laughs> flank, Olim is going to go. He is just going to slow jog up behind his dad going, hey, wait up. I do regret not taking chubs the amount of greens that I'm drawing now. <laughs> he is then going to spend one for fortunate. And we'll have a look at the top three cards on the deck. We get to put them back in any order. So we will put them back like so. He is then going to spend two, oh no, one, sorry, for Magical Brew. Have you seen, have you seen a healing no, two, card that you like not, the look of? Magical Brew. It's two for Buttermilk Elixir. So I get to draw four cards from the top of the deck. What color are you after? I am looking for blue or pink. Blue or pink? Oof. Yep. So on a blue, I get to heal X plus one wounds. On a pink, a friendly Norse or gnome gains plus one energy. Nice. And I am going to go for a blue two. Oh, Ian. I have a blue two. I have a blue three. And I have a blue one. But I'm 
gonna trust that you saw it and have got it. I'm gonna trust you with it. Have it. Have uh, it. Okay, that heals young Jack back to full. Yep, it does. Uh, and that is all I'm done. Show if you've been oh, yeah. truthful. We'll just show that so you can see what I had there. And again, I'll spite you in editing otherwise. That's you all done? Yep. It's glooming time. <laughs> I felt bad about saying that. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Gloom's going to go. He is going to try and shadow warp. So this will cost me two energy. And what it allows me to do is to move two X, presuming I get a pink. And this is a place, not a move, actually. So I also get my base width as a benefit. So I'm going to say pink three. Pink three. As I look him in the eye. Six inches place. <sighs> yeah, I've got to let you have that. And that's yeah. too risky for you to go again. Yeah, good man, good man. Right. So uh, I have tactically eyed this up from above. A place allows me to get the other side of Mr. Toodles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my slow jog to here. And I'm going to spend two because I'm a weakling to pick up this Moonstone. Hopefully bank it on Gloom. And that'll do for him. Okay. So Gloom. <laughs> basically, Gloom's got a target on him now. Basically Nightwalkering his way around. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> airship is going to respond to the fact that Gloom's just popped up next to the pond. And it is going to jog four. The and pond is safe. Anywhere near Jader is safe. Ground. one. <laughs> so it gets to within 10. I am then going to play my second campaign card, which is shoulder to shoulder. We'll just put that here. That means that for the remainder of the game, any friendly militia gain plus one melee and plus one arcane if they are within six inches of another friendly militia. So Jack and the airship are both militia. Nice. And they are within six of each other. They are, in fact, within four. Are you use your Ducks in the Barrel? Uh, yep, Ducks in the Barrel is active. So with first turn, once per turn, I can draw two additional Arcane cards when targeting an enemy. So you draw, like, what, six? I do. I draw Arcane three, plus two, plus one. I'm evade zero, and yep. you're after greens here. I am after greens, and this is a cost one shot. And looking at these, I am going to play that. And I am going to say, Tom, that is a green two, and it will do X plus two piercing damage. Four piercing damage. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take the four. So that knocks me very quickly down to three health. Okay. The airship has one left. Oh, two left. No, one left because it spent one to step, uh, which it will hold. Very nice. All right, we're going to have to see if we can heal some of this damage that's gone through. So I'm going to go with Mr. Toodles. So the first thing Toodles is going to do is going to attempt to heal Gloom with a healing action. I feel like I've said heal many times there. So that'll cost me two energy. And I am fishing for blues. And this is X plus one wounds restored. So I'm going to simply say that that is a blue one, which would heal him two. Right, I'm going to let you have that. Very nice. Can we also appreciate that I drew all three catastrophe cards during that pull? So Gloom is going to heal two. I'm then going to spend one and attempt to Lullaby. So we're just going to redraw for that. So the Lullaby cost me one energy. This is looking for a blue or a pink two. This would discard energy rounding up, restore two wounds. And obviously Gloom hasn't got any energy. I mean, I've got three blues, but none of them are two, Ian. So I'm just going to not claim anything there, just in case you've got a blue or a pink two knocking around. I mean, I'll just show you. I had both of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I made, no catastrophe. So. Made the correct choice. I had the other catastrophes again. So <laughs> uh, it plays, uh, gives me a jog to play with. So what Toodles is going to do because he's not there for combat. He's a lover, not a fighter. He's going to get out of the way so I can kind of unpack my fawns here. And that's him all done. Are you going to use forest critters against the forest critters? I, I <laughs> am going to call on the good forest folk. How dare you? I'm also going to take a jog with Joanna to here. Yeah, it's worth saying the airship did a step action as a reaction to mine to get out of the way for this. Yep. Uh, she is going to curse Loki on the way past for his inability to summon a forest in a useful <laughs> position like next to Hoth. Yes. Um, but luckily for her, Mr. Toodles has brought himself over within three inches of an unsuspecting forest <laughs> at the back of the fawn zone. It's because we haven't got Boris, so the murder bunnies aren't on our side. Uh, she is going to spend two for Pixie Alpha Elixir which will gain herself X plus one energy on a blue. Nice. Uh, I'm going to play that, and I'm going to say, Tom, that is a blue two. I'll accept you, blue two. Okay. So you're going to gain, what, three energy? So she spent, she gets two back, nice. plus another one, which will give her four overall. Lovely. 
And that's... And then what are you going to do? I'm going to go for Revenge of the Forest Friends. So that is target a wood or tree within 18 inches. It's just half a table. Uh, and I'm looking for pinks on her arcane of three, and it cost me two. So there you go, mate. Spend that. Is it once per turn, or can she use multiple times? No, she can use it multiple times. Oh, okay. And you have to pinks? Yes. Go for it. Okay, so I am just going to let that one slide. <laughs> Do you want to use it a second time? Yep. She's right, going to well, spend another go. Redraw. Thank you. Five, six. And then, yeah, whenever you're ready. And you will suffer off of a result of this X magical damage. And I'm going to say that is a pink two. A pink two? Well, I have a pink, pink three and two pink ones. I'll accept your pink two. So I will take X magical damage. Yep. Two magical damage on two doors knocks him down to five health, sadly. Yeah, it doesn't start getting helpful yet, but it's close. It's whittling. Yep. Right, we've done enough dancing, Ian. It's time to stab, and by stab I mean you stab your own models. So the Wendigo is going to go. It's going to jog because it's slow, and it's going to spend one to step here, which conveniently puts it within yep. six of Joanna I'm and also Young Jack. Going to reaction step with Brunhilde, so she is going to reaction step towards Olim, and that puts her within two of Jack. Now complicated stuff's going to happen here. I'm going to spend three for a mind control to mind control Jack to stab the child. But the child has a look of innocence, so we're thinking that because I'm telling Jack to do it and he's friendly, I have to spend an extra yep. energy. So that's what I'm going to do. And Jack's going to attack you, so it would be a melee of four up to six, minus one because of Gangi Gut with Brunhilde. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to attack my own boy with, I'm going to put this card down. I'm put that one down. Okay, are you ready to reveal? Yep. I've gone with a falling swing. And I went with thrust. Okay, I'm gonna crit that into a double falling swing. Now against a thrust, that would deal um, nothing, but I am doing slicing, so it would be plus two damage. So it'll be zero to plus two. Yep, two I damage. will pass that, uh, no, I'll take that on all. I was gonna pass it off to Brunhilde, but okay. new. No. And Jack will take two damage back, but he'll reduce it with his shield. Yep. Uh, so he'll take one. Just a father-son little spat, just as you do. Yeah, a big scary skull-headed monster makes you punch your own makes child. You do weird. How do you feel about it, Tom? <laughs> Look, Cass is at a nursery, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, as a reaction to being told to punch his own child, <laughs> young Jack is going to have a little run in and tickle the Wendigo, I think. So I'm not sorry after thanks one, to <laughs> Olim's Valhalla rule, a friendly Norse or young jack that starts a jog within six, can add plus two inches to its move provided it ends up engaging an enemy model. Oof. So that gives Jack a six inch jog towards yeah, the Yeah, he gets proper stuck in. So he is going to jog six. Uh, while you do that, I'm yeah. just going to step, step with the jackalope just because I need to spend this yep. energy, otherwise it's going to go to waste. Mm -hmm. So I stop outside of Hoff's two-inch melee. You do. Due to the Wendigo's quite terrifying, I have to s discard an energy in yeah. order to... See how you like it. it. I'm, I've got a look of innocence. <laughs> Indeed. So with his remaining two, uh, Jack is going to take a swing on the Wendigo. Yep, you're going to wall up me. I'm going to place this card. I am going to go with this one. What have you gone with? I went with a rising attack. I went with a sweeping cut. So I will crit that rising Ooh, attack. Ooh, that's tasty. So a rising attack against a sweeping cut would be two up to four currently. And then you've got modifiers. Yep, so I get plus two for doing slicing damage. I will, of course, choose slicing. One, two, three, four, five, six, leaving it on two health. Uh, a sweeping cut against a rising attack would natively do two, but the Wendigo's got rending claws, so if I do melee damage, increase it by one, and it becomes magical instead. So I still get to reduce three. all damage suffered by minus one. Yeah, so amazing it's only shield. two, thanks to the Ancestral Shield. And he is swing again? He is going to have another swing, see if he can just finish off that Wendigo. Second okay, attack. so second attack, we'll just remove that energy. Worth me saying I've got plus one melee because of Hoff being nearby, which is why I'm drawing five cards here. Yep. Speaking uh, of which, I'm going to place this. This one. Rising attack. Sweeping cut. Oh, I'm going to crit into a double rising attack mm -hmm. to start with. Have you got any crit in this you want to do? I don't on this one. Right, I am going to uh, change mine to an insatiable hunger. 
So against a sweeping cut, it would do two, mm -hmm. up to four, up to five damage against young Jack. Yep. How much are you doing back to I control? am doing into the rising attack, two up to four. So I don't know which order this comes in. They happen at the same time. So you will kill me. Yep. Do I kill you? Uh, if you do five damage down to four, yes, you would. Right. Now, unfortunately, I don't get to use my insatiable hunger, which would fully heal me because I'm not still alive. <laughs> it says if the enemy model is slain, this model recovers all wounds and energy, but I'm already KO'd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my second campaign card because I'm Lesher Vault, so I get shenanigans. Rebirth Ritual. Play it immediately after a character you control is slain. I'm just going to give you the Wendigo's Moonstone so you can place that while you're there, mate. Uh, here you go. Okay. The slain character loses possession of any Moonstones it was carrying as normal, then place it in base contact with a target-friendly character in play. Choose a value for X that is one or greater. The target suffers X wounds. The slain character restores X wounds, but no, uh, has no energy, but may activate this turn. I'm just gonna... So, Jack <laughs> goes away. Uh, as much as I would like to eat some of Toodles' health, I'm actually gonna pop next to the bunny. The bunny is going to suffer two wounds, and the Wendigo is going to heal two wounds, just so it has an energy next turn. So it knocks the bunny down to eight and leaves the Wendigo on two health remaining. Well, that was a, that was a tasty round of combat there. It's only because of uh, Lesher Vault cult things that I managed to get out of that one. So I'm left with Hoff to go. First thing Hoff is gonna do is he's gonna blow his hunting horn and try and get Toodles the hell away from this forest. <laughs> he's realized the danger. So I need a pink uh, from my arcane stat of four and I would move X plus one. I'm gonna say that's a pink three. I'm going to let you have that. Thank you very much. So I can move Toodles four inches. I'm not going to go the full four. I just want to be outside of three of this forest. For why? Because the, the creatures, they're not on our side. We need, I need to paint Boris. That's what it's taught me. Uh, Hoff is then going to uh, jog, spend one to pick up a Moonstone, which will slow him down. And then he's just going to take a step action to go with his boys and lady to this position here. Okay, so having watched young Jack just get annihilated <laughs> by the Wendigo, she was too far away to take the damage for him. Which I am was... a fool though, I've just said, because the Wendigo, if I would have eaten another wound off the Jackalope, I could be ready for a mind control next turn, but you live and learn, you live and learn. Yep. So Brunhilde is just going to jog around all him to here, spend her one to reduce this stone to depth one. Jade is just gonna take her step so that she's gonna get her, her bow trained on the small child. <laughs> How rude. And I think that takes us to the end of the turn. It does indeed. And this is the picture at the end of the second turn and that was very much characterized by the Jack Wendigo stabber thing, isn't it? Uh, I think you just said off camera, losing a Moonstone Carrier is a bit of a pain to, to nix in a In a crew where I've only got five Moonstone Carriers rather than six, thanks to the airship. Yep, so um, I am in a precarious position. We'll see what the roll-off does and then we'll talk about it in a second. So you're at plus one, because yep. you still have initiative. I roll a one, so you can't not get this. Yep. Uh, I can three, try my best. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have the initiative going into turn three. Any thoughts or plans or prayers? Well, Shoot the it window. comes down to whether or not I can move the airship up to be able to do something. Yeah. Um, if I can get the right cards with Loki, I can blast it in quick and then just drop bombs on your crew. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. So we'll go to the first activation of turn three, which will be the Norse. Okay, so first activation going into turn three. Brunhilde's looking a little bit peaky at this point, like another good shot from Joanna might just, and uh, from Jada. I mean, Jada Joanna might just take her, her as well. She that. could, the Wendigo could eventually make her do that. <laughs> uh, so Olim is going to have a quick look at the top three cards on the deck. Oops, bump the camera. Uh, I then get to put these back in whatever order I want. So I'll let the camera see what they were. We'll just pop those back down here. And then he's going to spend two for a buttermilk elixir. And he's going to target Brunhilde. So you're arcane four? Arcane of four. And you're after a blue. I am after a blue. I'm going to presume uh, you've seen what you like. One, two, three, four, five, six Thanks, to you. Well, what are you going to say? 
Uh, I am going to say that this is a blue three. I will accept your blue three. Okay, so she heals X plus one wounds. Oh, four wounds back is good. Uh, we'll get those, we'll collect those from you. Do you want to jog anywhere? Uh, he is going to do a quick jog, well, slow jog. <laughs> um, he is just going to slow a trundle, jog a trundle. to get a little bit of cover. To there. And we'll heal up Brunhilda and pass it over to you for first activation of the font. Yep, I think we're both at the stage of kind of try and heal things very quickly. So I'm going to go Mr. Toodles. He is going to spend two energy to attempt to heal the Wendigo, and I'm fishing for blue. So I'm going to say that this is simply a blue one. Oh, I'm going to let you have that. Awesome. So the Wendigo will heal one up to two. So that takes him up to four health, and then I'm simply just going to redraw and try and do this a second time. And yeah, I'm going to spend it to do it again. And I'm going to say that this time, Ian, this is a blue two. Uh, I'm going to call your bluff on that. It is a blue two. So two up to three will heal the Wendigo. So yeah, it's only taken one wound now. So that means it is on uh, seven health. I'm not going to cheat anything else in because the rest of my hand is not blue. <laughs> so he just flips over all the other blues in his hand. <laughs> so it means I've just got a jog left with Toodles. Obviously, we don't want to stand too close to this foresty terrain because that makes us sad about things. So what he's going to do is just going to move across to stand in front of Gloom. And that is him all done. Okay, so the airship is going to go next. It is going to spend two to reload its harpoon gun. Ian's got this down now of like, I'm going to shoot and waste the bullets. The Wendigo can't make me shoot my own models. Yep. So I'm then just going to... Make a, a little list. Little move. She's yeah. going to drift in the wind to there, which should put her within 10 of gloom. Maybe she's going to slightly up. Forward, yeah. But out of 10 of Jada, so Jada has to at least come off that rock. I like my bench, thank you. And I'm going to take a shot at gloom. Yeah, so using your ducks in a barrel, so your arcane stat of five. Yep. After greens. After greens, indeed. Green me up. Uh, and this will do X plus two piercing damage. That is a green three, Tom. Oh, that's a ballsy move. I've got three, so it'll do five damage to Yep. Me. I mean, I'm going to die either way then, so I might as well call you bluff. You're going to call my bluff on I it, might Tom? Might as well, yeah. I mean, I, I hate to that's see fair, such an fair. assumption of dishonesty. So he'll explode in a second. Yep. What um, do you want to do for the I will get to go again. So ricocheting this one off. Uh, I'm going to say that's a green two hitting the when did I go. Okay, I'll accept the green two because I literally have like all the green ones. <laughs> so uh, it'll do two damage, three damage? It will do four damage piercing to the Wendigo and shove it back an inch. All right, the Wendigo has three health remaining and I will just eat him back. Gloom will drop two stones at depth one. Do you want them just forward or what? Yeah, I would put them just between... Yeah. There and there. I put one far at the, at the other side from Jada. She, like, she's going to have to move. Okay, so there and there. Yep. Okay, okay. And poor Gloom. We um, barely knew you. I will just show the camera what the second one was. <laughs> Did you have all the twos and threes and I had all the ones? Is that the way that that worked then? Well, I see you're shooting and I raise you that of my own. So, Jada's going to step one just to come forward to here. She's gonna fire a shot with her bow into Joanna. So this is arcane stat of four, looking for greens. Uh, I'm gonna say that this is a green one. Green one, uh, on you go. X plus one piercing damage, that'll be two damage to you. Okay, but Joanna reduces incoming damage by minus one for every friendly gnome or animal within four inches which will be these two. Is this so, a gnome? Oh, yep. it's a gnome of Well then. So she reduces that to zero. And I'm just going to then jog and babysit these two stones. There. All right, is Jade all done? Okay, so we are going to follow up jo uh, Jada's nonsense with Brunhilde. She is going to take advantage of Olim's Valhalla and ride like the wind into Hoff. So that gives her plus two on her jog if she ends engaging. So she goes six inches on her jog around here to engage Hoff at an inch. Yeah, I am going to take a step. So unfortunately, that still leaves me within the two, but my idea is to try and keep my Moonstones moderately safe. Yep. 
Uh, you're, uh, melee start at four up to six. Yeah. Your signature's on a... On a falling swing. Mine is on a falling swing as well. So she is going there. And see which one we want to do. We will go with this one. Okay, I've gone with a high guard. I went with a sweeping cut. Oh, we do nil-nil to each other. Yep. Nice. Do you want to hit me again? I think I do. We'll redraw. And I'm going to play this one. I'm going to go with this one. Okay. High guard. Ooh, rising yeah. attack. Got it right. I double up the rising attack. Ooh, so that would be four damage That'd currently. Be four, which goes up to six for slicing or piercing. Oh, that knocks me down to four health straight away. Hoff is not happy. It actually, talks me down to uh, three health straight away. Yeah, and that, unfortunately, is all of her energy. Lovely. So I'm going to burn an activation here with the Wendigo. It's only on three health anyway, so I'm just going to yeet it forward to this position here, and it's going to buy an attack on Brunhilde. So while I get melee start at four, up to six, plus one for Hoff, you're on minus one because of some crowding out going on. Yep. And I'm going to attack you with this card. I'm going to go with this card. Okay, I have gone with a sweeping cut. I went with the rising attack. Ooh, very nice. So I'm going to crit my sweeping cut. Yep. I'm going to super sweep you. So to you, it would be against the rising attack. Uh, it would be two up to four, up to five magical damage because I have rending claws. Yep. And uh, my rising attack into your sweeping cut will do one up to three thanks to... Giant Forged Blades. And three is the exact amount to wipe out the Wendigo. So, five to you. Yep. Three to me. How much health is Brunhilde on? Three, four, five. That leaves her on five. We're trying to soften her up. Oh dear, it's like the full court press now. This is this is not good. <laughs> what doom have you measured out? Uh, the doom that we've measured out, well, again, thanks to Olim's Valhalla, because his mum is just within six of him. She is going to take a six-inch jog to engage Hoff. He's we'll going to take, take a step... To break that, uh, which I will up. spend one to follow up. I'm going to take a half step to not be within three of the wooded terrain, but to be enough outside of the two inch melee. Yep. Eats all my energy. She's I'll just get that follow up token out of the way. There you go. Be there. So outside of the two of the bunny. And she has a single swing at you. Yep. So you're up to a million cards, though. I am on melee seven. I'm on melee of four, so I'm going to play this card here. I am going to play this card here. Okay, I've gone with a sweeping cut. Ah. Yeah, get parry. <laughs> so uh, I can just counter attack this for free. Uh, it's not going to be the best. I'm just going to do a rising attack against you. Yep. So rising attack against the thrust will be one, but it'll go up to three because of impact damage with my felling axe and this will ignore your passive abilities because I've got an enchanted weapon. Yep, so one, two, three, leaves are on four. Heyo. Well, Joanna, this could go really badly or really well here. So the jackalope's gonna go. It's gonna take a jog action again to stay outside of three of the forest, but to get within an inch of Joanna. And I'm gonna buy an attack against her. So my melee stat of three goes up to five. I'm not a fawn, so I don't get any benefits from Hoff, but I do take one of your melee cards away because about numbering because of the big lad. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna play this card. Or... Get carded. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna play this card. Okay, I've gone with a thrust. Oh, I went with the low guard. Oh, okay, so a thrust versus a low guard would be one. But because it's piercing and I have razor sharp antlers, it's going to be plus two, so that'll be three damage. Uh, okay, I am going to pass that off to Brunhilde. How's Brunhilde feeling? That leaves Brunhilde on two. She's come not on, feeling very on, good. Jada, shoot her in the face next turn. Uh, I'm going to buy another attack, so we'll redraw. Yep. And this time I'm going to play this card right here. And I'm going to play this one. Okay, let's reveal a rising attack. Into the thrust. Ooh. You could double up that thrust. Very nice. Okay, so a rising attack for. So I go on a thrust for you, would be how much damage? It would be two up to four, up to five, because it's slicing or piercing. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Knocks me down to three health. 
My rising attack is going to be upgraded into a gore because we are within an inch of our, each other. Mm -hmm. So against a thrust, it would do two damage, but it's piercing, so it'll go up to four damage. Which is enough to kill him. Yeah. Uh, I could move you if I would have got the kill there, but no, it's all good. So that gore will do the job. And then I've got one energy left. I'm just going to take a step action off camera and we'll cut back. And the jackalope is just going to yeet itself back there with a step. Okay, to round out the turn, everyone's looking a little bit peaky in places. Yep. So Loki is just going to take a two-inch jog. He's then going to spend one to step to put him next to base with that moonstone. And then with his last two, he is going to try and use his healing action from my camp, my upgrade card. Uh, so arcane of three, I am targeting a friendly model with an eight, which is Brunhilda, and I am looking for blues. I'm going to say that is a blue one. Go on, have it. So she'll heal two. Yep. Takes her up to four health. Yep, and rounds out the turn. Rounding out things for me is going to be the boss man, Hoff, who's lucky to still be alive, to be honest. He is just going to move himself back with his slow jog to be in base contact with this moonstone. And we'll round the turn off. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a grandstand here going into the finale. So, um, yeah, I've got very low health Hoff and Jackalope. You've got very low health Brunhilda. I think there's, there's a lot of potential options for things to die here, especially things that are carrying Moonstones. The only thing I have in my favour is Jada's near two and can... Probably stay alive. Potentially near three. Yeah, potentially near three <laughs> if Hoff dies in a second. So we've got a straight roll off for this turn, see what we get. I roll a one again as is standard. And I got a four. That's going to be big as we go into the first activation of the last turn, which will be the Norse. Okay, we are going to go with the airship. The airship is just going to glide on the wind to here. I'm going to take a step with the jackalope. I'm just going to step to there. I'm going to spend two. To reload. Yeah, blast him. Blast him in his bunny face. Yep. So I've got Arcane of Six against you, thanks to my ducks in a barrel and the fact that you're a gigantic bunny. I am a big bunman. So I am going to say, whoa, this one is a green one. I will accept your green one. You'll kill the bunny. Could you do three damage to me? Yep. It's piercing. X plus two. Where do you want the stone there? Uh, let's put it as far away from your guys as we can. There we go. And I'll kill the bunman. And we'll just show this to the camera. We'll show the rest of the hand to see that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, did you have all the If there bluffs? had been a bluff. Right. Okay. Are you all done? That's me. Over to you. Mr. Toodles, he's not the hero that we deserve, but he's the hero we've got. He's going to go. First thing he's going to do, he's going to spend two, because I've got the extra one for my The Hunt. He's going to attempt to heal Hoff. So I'm going to draw uh, five cards. And Ian, I've drawn nothing. So I'm, I'm just going to pay to do it again. And uh, we're just going to reshuffle. Okay, this time I'm going to say, looking for blues, that is a blue three. Blue three? Yeah, I'm going to heal four from this. Alright, looking at my hand, I've got to let you have it as much as it pains me. Yeah, boy. Okay, so Hoff is going to heal four. That knocks him up to a far more comfortable uh, seven health. And then Toodles, as you can see, the bravest little tutor. He is literally going to walk and stand in front of Brunhilde and be like, Hey, check out my Goblin Funk Jazz. <laughs> and that's him done. Okay, um, it's going to be a grandstand finish, like you said. It's cagey. Uh, Olim is going to go. He is going to spend one to step outside of this piece of train and then slow jog to here. He's then going to spend two for his buttermilk elixir and targeting Brunhilde. I'm looking for either a blue to heal her or a pink to give her an extra energy. And I'm going to say that is a blue two, Tom. I have the other blue two, Ian, so I'm going to call it a bluff. You're going to call it a bluff? What is it? It's oh. a blue two, so she heals X plus one. So she'll heal three. Yep, which will take her back to five, I mean, six, Toodles can't seven. one shot her now, you know, with this pan pipe. And I'm going to follow that up. Say blue two. Uh, say blue. I'm not going to say blue two. I'm going to say that is a pink two. I'll accept that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. With that. So you she have gets all the extra energy. energy. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Nicely done. I really don't like that Brunhilde's like gaining power with rage <laughs> as this goes on. So I'm going to get half out of the way. Half is going to step and then jog to the south side of this moonstone. And then he's gonna spend one to pick it up. So he is carrying 
two Moonstones now. And he's going to hope that Brunhilde can't just rinse him. Okay, so it's over to Loki. Uh, and he is going to spend two looking for a one with the wind. And that is his arcane of three. And he's looking for blues. I'm going to call that a blue one. For a two move. Yep. Have it. Go on. Because she's going to have to really sidestep here to get around. So we'll quickly yep. pre-measure it off so camera. We'll just show that to the camera. And we'll cut back in a second. Okay. So she's moved. And Loki spends one to pick up the remaining stone. And passes over to you for Jada to take the stones and run like a coward. Run away. <laughs> yep. And yeah, my own unpacking issues came in here. Jada's going to go in because she's just the best girl. She's going to spend two energy to pick up these moonstones, which will render her slow. She is going to take a jog action to here, and then she's going to take two step action. She's going to sit in the river, well, the little pond that she has made her home for this game. Just going to scoot that back and she's going to see if Brunhilde can kill her boss. Okay, so... It's the great fight of our age. Brun Brunhilde has one chance to try and stop you from winning this. She's got to it's kill a small chance. walk and kill Hoff. She's got to kill a almost full health Hoff. She, has, with not, one she swing. has a lot of swords for it though. She does. So she is going to spend one fine attack on... Doodles. Doodles' is melee of two goes up to three because Hoff is within six of him, which is why we, why we did that. I have this card. Is it a low guard signature, Ian? That's the question. Is it a low guard signature? That is the question. You ready? One, yep. two, three. High guard. Ah. Yeah. Get blocked. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> against the falling swing, I'm just going to do like a rising attack back, which does nothing because I'm a weak link. Yep. He just bops her on the nose of a pan pipe. <laughs> Go on. We'll attack again. Kill her. Finish the job. Yep. Okay. So second attack. This was not going the way it was meant to go. I'll play this card. High guard. Sweeping cuts. Oh. Double sweeping cuts. All right, sweeping which does cuts. actually nothing. But... Does nothing. We nullify each other. Yep. Well, a wonderful game. It was. A wonderful well played. That, that got far more sketchy as the game went on. Far too much healing in that but... fawn group. <laughs> so we'll go to the end game and talk it through. And this is the picture at the end of the game with the fawn stealing it. Four moonstones to your three, I believe. They're getting very lucky at the end. Hoff is basically carrying his guts as he runs back into the forest. But uh, really good game, mate, and we'll go to the outro. So while the victory was mine, the moral victory was yours, because I had to be a coward, like, picking up my moonstones at the Here end. You were borderline for running off the table was... like a tournament yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> it is the rule on the channel that you're not allowed to run off the table unless it's the deciding moonstone. I was like, it's not the deciding but, moonstone. But, but you can sideways run away with, with your machine gun. How much but... How much damage did Jada do? How much damage did Jada do? J like, let's just focus more on that. Like that, but She's obviously always the MVP for me. For you, the airship was good. Brunhilde was good. Loki with the healing upgrade was good. Yeah, Loki, the healing, Olim did what Olim does. I Hot think Olim boost. actually is the is the key piece to, yeah. the, to the crew. Yeah. Uh, the airship, for the first time I've used it, that was a lot of fun. So Lucky with the cards a few times, you yeah. know? We just um, said with the piercing damage though, like outside Commonwealth, there isn't much that resists piercing. You usually resist impact at range. So actually yeah. being able to just like, and you realize halfway through, you're like, oh, I can push people with this as well. Yeah. It's like a harpoon literally like smacking into people. That's it. And the other bit that we didn't get to demonstrate was the, you just float over and drop bombs on people. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so, when all my crew clustered together, I was like, how quick can your airship move? And yeah. he's like, I'm not there yet. And I was like, oh, thank God for that. Anything, if it wasn't for living in fear of Jada and her homing arrows, yeah. it was uh, it was just limping around the side, shooting people. But no, it was a mightily good game, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Yep. Well, a massive thank you for watching that video, guys. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find some more, they should be over here. And if you want to support the channel and the content that we create here, there's links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. Take care.